G'day everyone, welcome to Brushes with Beck. Today's video is a how-to video where I'm going to show you five different ways how to transfer a sketch onto a piece of paper where you want to do a finished piece on. Now, as you can see, I'm just doing a little sketch here. This is a white rhino calf that I photographed at a zoo not that long ago, a few months ago when she was only a couple of months old. There's a few reasons you might not want to use an original sketch. You could indent the paper too much if you sketch too hard or too messy. And you can actually damage the paper if you're rubbing out too much and making too many corrections. So transferring a sketch is a good way to preserve the quality of the paper for the final piece. So here's my little sketch. I've just refined the details and made those darker. The first transfer method that I'm going to show you is very simple and just involves tracing paper. Now, if you don't have tracing paper, don't worry, I have methods that don't use it. And also, if you don't have tracing paper, head into your kitchen and grab some baking paper instead. Baking paper isn't quite as transparent, but it works almost exactly the same, and I have used it many times in the past. So you want to tape your tracing paper down over the top of your sketch so that it doesn't move, and just neatly trace over all the sketch lines that you want to keep. Do that nice and neatly because you want it to be as accurate as possible. Once you've got that done, check you've covered all the lines and on to the next step. You have two options really. If you want to reverse your image, you can simply turn your tracing paper over and go over those lines with a pencil to transfer the traced image onto your paper. However, it will be reversed. If you don't want it reversed, there is another step in between. So when you turn over your tracing paper, make sure you have some scrap paper underneath. You don't want to do this on top of your final paper because it will transfer through a little. And you need to trace over all of those lines again. They are on the front side of the paper and now you are tracing over them on the back side of the paper. I'm using a 2B pencil here. It's a bit darker, so it will transfer a bit better than if I had used, say, a HB. With that done, you can see that it has transferred my first tracing onto that scrap paper a little bit, which is why you don't want to use your final paper for that step. So transferring you to your final paper from the tracing paper is very easy. Stick your paper down, and then stick your tracing paper down so that that doesn't move either. I like to tape the tracing paper at the top and the side where I'm transferring it to prevent movement, but I do like to leave uh, one corner exposed so that I can lift it up and check that A, my sketch is transferring properly, and B, that I haven't missed anything. Because you don't want to take the tracing paper off and remove that tape to find out you've missed something and then not be able to line it back up again properly. Now, because we're trying not to damage the paper, I like to use a more blunt pencil for this step. I'm using a polychromos pencil for this step, but it doesn't really matter. It's just what I had at hand that was blunt. For this step, you don't need to be accurate because your sketch on the other side of the tracing paper is accurate. You can just rub over those lines and I'm being very, very messy. Moderate to firm pressure, but not too firm because, as I said before, you don't want to damage the paper. Once you've finished, lift up your tracing paper, check that it's all transferred. It's a bit hard to see on camera, but it's all there and it would be quite easy to work from. Method number two involves more tape. The number of times you're going to see me tape my sketch down is just silly. So using tracing paper again and tracing over your sketch. Technically, you don't need tracing paper for this method, but it does make it easier. So once again, tracing my cute little rhino onto the tracing paper. We are going to be using transfer paper for this method, which is very easy. Transfer paper actually comes in two colors, possibly more, I don't actually know. But I know it comes in a black and a white. So if you're using toned paper, it's easier to see your transfer using the white. So tape down your final paper, with your tracing paper taped down on top in the correct position. Make sure you have your transfer paper the correct way up. You can see the top of this transfer paper is a mottled gray color and the other side of the paper is more of a solid black color. 
and you'll see that in a moment once I lift it up to check that it's working. If you have it the wrong way up, nothing's going to happen except you'll just transfer your sketch onto the back side of your tracing paper, which is really not useful in this situation. So as you can see, I've switched to a coloured pencil. It doesn't matter, it just makes it easier for me to see which lines I've been over and which I haven't. And there's the transferred sketch. Now you don't need to tape down your transfer paper because it doesn't matter if that moves, but it does matter if your tracing paper moves. The good thing about transfer paper is that it doesn't smudge easily, although it is a little bit harder to erase, so keep that in mind if you're going to be colouring something very pale and just don't press too hard. The next method, number three, that I'm going to show you is a light box or window method if you don't have a light box. It's very easy. Ignore the piece of paper taped up on the left that was just there to block some extra light. Tape your sketch up on the window and tape your piece of paper over that sketch top and bottom to secure it down. It's easier if the light outside the window is very bright and your room is a bit darker. Then you can just trace over that sketch very easily. Now if you've got a light box, fantastic, it's so much easier, but for years I used a window for tracing my sketches and it works wonderfully. Now obviously this is dependent on the type of paper you are using, it's not going to work with pastel matte or darker toned papers, and with really heavyweight papers you want to make sure that your sketch is really dark with good light outside, but it can be done. Method number four is one of the simplest methods, though not always quite as effective. Basically, all we are going to do is take the original sketch, flip it upside down, and just scribble on the back. Now for this you can use charcoal pencil, graphite pencil, even chalk if you want a white transfer. Just colour over where all your lines are on the other side where your sketch is. Flip it over, tape it down to your final piece of paper, and you can use this original sketch page, basically the same as transfer paper. It's not going to work quite as well, but it does work. It's free, and you don't need any extra supplies. Now, this one, I'm not even sure you can see it on camera, but you'll have to take my word for it that it does work. Because I might have been better off using a higher number B pencil, like for this, like a 6B, or even a charcoal pencil. But it does transfer, and it's a really, really easy way if you don't have any supplies. The final method, number five, is the grid method. This is more commonly used for transferring a photo to a sketch form, if you're drawing from a reference photo to get an accurate sketch. Draw even grid squares over your sketch. I've just used the width of the ruler to make that easy so I didn't have to measure anything. On your final piece of paper, you want to replicate those grid squares. Now, obviously, if you want to move your subject on the page, you need to alter where the grid squares are. Once you've got your squares drawn, you just copy over that image as best as possible. The grid squares are there to give you reference points for where certain lines are and anatomy of what, you're, what you are drawing, um, where it's sitting on the page. Now, I'm just going to do this quickly, but take your time with it and you'll get a really accurate copy from this. Like I said, this is a longer method and more commonly used for drawing from photos, but it works for transferring sketches too. And then just all you need to do is erase your grid squares once you are finished. And my cat Jasiri always has to be involved, as you know. So just a review, the grid transfer method, there is a window transfer method that you can see here. On the other side of that, I've got the transfer that we did from the back of the original sketch with rubbing the pencil on the back. That's a very simple method. Then we have the transfer paper that we used underneath the tracing paper. And then just the tracing paper by itself, rubbing over the front with the tracing on the back. So I just thought I'd compare my grid method with my traced sketch. It's come up pretty close for a quick job. It's just the head that's a little bit lopsided and not quite the same dimensions. So those are five very easy methods for transferring a sketch onto a final piece of paper. This is really beneficial if you are a messy sketcher or tend to erase a lot or press a bit too hard with your pencil, because doing any of those things can damage your paper. 
So I do hope you've enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did and comment down below. Please subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching. Stay creative.